we have to stand up to Amazon. We cannot ignore Amazon. We cannot walk away from it. Um, it's the fight about Amazon is not just about this one workplace in Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's really about the future of work and how workers are going to be treated in that future. Alabama was the site of many key events in the American Civil Rights Movement, so it does seem appropriate that another key event, a battle for workers' rights, recently took place in that deep southern state. Now, I'm talking, of course, about the fight to unionize workers at the Amazon warehouse in Bessemer, Alabama. That fight, it was led by Stuart Applebaum. He's a president of the Retail Wholesale and Department Store Union. That battle, that fight, it drew national attention. But unfortunately, the unionization drive came up short. Well, today I've got the honor of introducing you to Mr. Applebaum. He's also the executive vice president of the 1.3 million member United Food and Commercial Workers International Union. I've asked Mr. Applebaum to take us behind the scenes at Bessemer. He's going to share his perspective. He'll give us an update. And together, together, we'll find out what's next. Welcome to Over 50 TV, Mr. Applebaum. Lou, it's good to be with you and to be with your listeners today. I, I certainly appreciate that, and I have a feeling that they will appreciate it uh, as much. Now, let me ask you, were you surprised Were you surprised that the Amazon workers in Bessemer, that they uh, voted down the union? I think that people should not misinterpret the results of the vote. The vote did not indicate that workers at Amazon were satisfied with Amazon's working conditions or the way that Amazon treats its employees. Instead, what I think that the vote results demonstrate is the powerful impact of employer intimidation and interference and in how Amazon forced people to be afraid to vote for the union. And I'd also note that this election is far from over. The NLRB is conducting hearings on whether or not the vote results should be thrown out and a new election should be held because of Amazon's behavior. Hmm. We, we heard from people um, throughout the process about what Amazon was doing to try to intimidate them. And it was really outrageous beyond anything we have heard of before. And we don't believe that there should be no consequences um, for Amazon's action. Most of us have read about some of the, some of the, uh, the things that Amazon did to, to really impact the, the vote. Can you, can you share with us some, some of the things? Sure, that of course. Think? Some of the things they did, unfortunately, are legal and demonstrate the failure of labor law reform and need to be changed. But they also did things that were totally illegal. Mm -hmm. And all of these things were geared towards intimidating people. They built their campaign around a lie. They told people that if you voted for the union, it was going to cost you a lot of money and dues and you needed to save your money. They had a website that was called Do It Without Dues. Well, the truth is Alabama is what we refer to as a right to work state, which means that nobody ever, ever, ever has to pay a penny in union dues mm -hmm. unless they chose to, but you wouldn't know that from Amazon's campaign. Amazon conducted captive audience meetings, which should be illegal, but they're not. And the, at these mandatory meetings, which were held several times a week, people would have to go to meetings of up to an hour, several times a week, where they would listen to um, company representatives lecture them and why unions are bad and why they had to be afraid of unions and they had to avoid unions at all costs. Amazon brought in 200 outsiders to walk the, um, uh, the floor of the facility and to corner people on one-on-one -on -one meetings and tell them that they had to um, vote against the union. They spread rumors uh, that if the union came in, Amazon might close the facility. 
um, which is something you're not even allowed to say or do. Mm -hmm. uh, but they told people that um, you'd lose your job if, uh, um, if the union won a majority. They told people that they could lose their benefits if the union came in. Well, the only way that happens is if the company insists on fewer benefits. It's not the union that's going to ask for people to be paid less mm -hmm. um, or to get fewer benefits. Um, they, and let me go back to the captive audience meetings just to show you the level of intimidation. Sure, sure. If someone questioned what it was that Amazon was saying, they'd be called up to the front of the group and a picture would be taken of their employee badge. Supposedly so, um, their questions could be answered one-on-one -on -one later on, or sometimes they were just expelled from the meetings. Yeah. Um, it's uh, incredible pressure they put on people. Um, we, were, we were amazed by what it was that Amazon had done. Um, we have seen many um, anti-union campaigns before, but nothing mm -hmm. like that and nothing that so blatantly um, violated the instructions that they were given by the National Labor Relations. Well, let's, I know you're going through the hearings now, is that correct? We are going through the hearings right now. Even as we speak, the hearing is going on. Um, today is the um, eighth day of the hearing. Mm -hmm. um, it's been going um, full days every day for eight days now. There's so much evidence that's being considered by the, by the National Labor Relations Board. We'll see what the board decides. Um, hopefully, and we expect they will, call for a new election. But my understanding with the National Labor Relations Board is that they cannot find, but what I guess I'm hearing is they can call for, can they demand a new election? They can throw out the vote results and there would be a new election. They so then you'd have to start all over again? Um, we get to hold a, um, we start the vote all over again. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I presume that um, whoever loses this decision about whether or not there should be a new election will appeal. So I believe this will be a lengthy process. When the results were, were announced, um, I, I, I wondered how that will affect other unionization efforts in, in other cities at other companies. I think that's an excellent question. Um, you know, like I look at what this campaign has accomplished. I, um, I, I look at this as the um, largest effort by Amazon workers to make a change to their employer. It's also the first time that there's been an election for an Amazon warehouse anywhere in the United States. Mm -hmm. For the last 25 years, there had never been an election. No one has ever gone into an election for a warehouse before. Mm -hmm. And we thought that was an achievement. And yeah. um, we thought getting to an election was a victory in itself. I think that um, what we've done is we've, um, We've exposed the extent to which an employer and especially Amazon would go to crush union organizing. Mm. And I think that people have been very surprised by what it was that they have seen. And if labor law reform eventually passes, if the PRO Act eventually passes, mm. I think um, the campaign in Bessemer is going to have played a big role in that. This was a global story. Um, we feel that we have reinvigorated the labor movement mm -hmm. um, with the civil rights community, with younger people um, who were very excited about the campaign. We've shown another way of organizing with the inclusion of many partners in this effort. And I think that what we did was we initiated, we may have lost the vote, but we've initiated a global discussion about the way Amazon operates. 
So how long will you have to wait to, to get the results from, from the board? <laughs> um, I, I hope that we hear quickly um, the hearing officer's decision. And then it will be, I presume it will be uh, appealed to the board. And then we have no idea how long it could take. Can Amazon drag out the, uh, the appeal process? I'm sure they'll try to. They tried to drag out the election. Um, they tried to drag out um, every, uh, every part of the process thus far. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to drag it out. Um, also, the lawyers who are conducting this are paid by the hour. The more hours, um, the better they do. But let me ask you one more question then. It, say the board does, does rule that the election results should be thrown out. What would you do different next time on this next, uh, on this, this next go round? I think that there are um, a few things that we'd be able to do differently. I think the pandemic limited us. Um, we were not able to hold large meetings. Our ability to meet with people during a pandemic um, was restricted and that would not be a case in a rerun election, we presume. Um, the, uh, also, um, we received um, a lot of support from people that, and I don't think that support determines how people vote, but what it does do is it says, um, take this effort seriously and decide for yourself what you want to do. So when President Biden put out his video, um, that, that had a big impact, but it was already late in the process and probably um, right. many, if not most people had already voted. Mm -hmm. And I think that Amazon was saying that oh, don't take the union seriously. Yeah. What um, Biden said, take the union seriously mm -hmm. and decide for yourself. And so I think that that would be a big difference, too. We received yeah. a lot of community support. We would hope that we'd have the community support this time from the moment the campaign began again. Would, would you consider, would you consider, or is it even a possibility instead of, of trying to unionize the Bessemer plant in down south to maybe attempt to unionize uh, an Amazon warehouse in, in up north? The, I, I think that we're going to look at um, many things. I think that we're going to um, try to bring a union to the Bessemer facility. Um, and we're hearing from people all over the country. And um, if we were thinking of organizing at another location, it's not something I'd be able to tell you on this call. Well, one last question I, I have for you, Stuart, is for workers who want to or believe that we need, that we need more worker rights, and certainly I see that and, and believe that's true, especially for older workers, for those workers, what, what kind of uh, encouragement can you give them? I, I, I think the genie's out of the bottle. I think that, um, I, I think there has been more positive support for unions as a result of this campaign than we've seen in decades. Mm -hmm. I think that people understand what it is that they need to do to form a union, and especially for older people. Um, people like me, um, a union is even more important. We saw that in Amazon. Um, all, the pace is unbearable. Um, a lot of the younger workers didn't feel the strains on their body that older workers did. I th um, it's difficult working conditions. A lot of people get injured but it's much more severe for people who are older. Yeah. And we saw that older people um, were um, much more supportive of the union than maybe young people for whom this was their first job and um, who did not quite feel 
the wear and tear on their bodies the same way as older people do. And, and as I've grown older myself, I see more and more of a need for a strong union presence in, in corporate America. And I'm going to tell you that we're not going to be able to build a strong labor movement, a stronger labor movement in the United States if we leave Amazon unchallenged and allow it to operate completely non-union in its distribution system. That we have to stand up to Amazon. We cannot ignore Amazon. We cannot walk away from it. Um, it's the fight about Amazon is not just about this one workplace in Alabama. Mm -hmm. It's really about the future of work and how workers are going to be treated in that future. Stuart, if I could give you a fist bump, I'd do it. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Thank you it's so good much. It's good to be with you. And thank you. And thank you to everyone who listened. <laughs>